Hello women made in the image of God. Today we're back with another Bible in a year video. And today we get to read Isaiah 62 to 64 and 1 Thessalonians 5. So let's pray and enjoy the word. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can even come to you and pray to you. Thank you for just the redemption that you've given to us in Christ so that we can come to you, Lord, that we can be with you, reconciled with you. Um, learning now of you and drinking of your um, beauty, learning um, just to delight ourselves in you as we see how pure and how delightful and how true and how faithful you are, God, and just all together, like how wonderful you are god we need you and we need we need to see you cl more clearly today lord <laughs> lord would you um give us hearts that love you that cherish you that desire you only and that um are growing in you lord we need you lord and we thank you for giving us your precious spirit to guide us and and help us understand. So, Lord, pray that you would just give us understanding, please, as we read. Um, yeah, God, would you be glorified in this time? And would your people, would these women made in your image, be edified in this time? Would you bring salvation to those who don't yet know you truly? And would you bring sanctification for those who do? Lord, thank you for this time. Help us to be focused and leaning on you as we read. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all, open up in your Bibles to Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62. Um, in crypt. Isaiah 63. Who is this who comes from Edom in crimsoned garments from Basra? He who is splendid in his apparel. Psalm 62. To the choir master, according to Jeduthun, a psalm of David. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. Isaiah 62 For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth as brightness, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness, and all the kings your glory and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called, my delight is in her and your land married for the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have set watchmen. All the day and all the night they shall never be silent. You who put the Lord in remembrance, take no rest, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a praise in the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink your wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up a signal over the peoples. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called sought out, a city not forsaken.
Crimson Gar Isaiah, Isaiah 63. Who is this who comes from Edom, in crimsoned garments from Basra? He who is splendid in his apparel, marching in the greatness of his strength. It is I, speaking in righteousness, mighty to save. Why is your apparel red, and your garments like his who treads in the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone, and from the peoples no one was with me. I trod them in my anger and trampled them in my wrath. Their lifeblood spattered on my garments and stained all my apparel. For the day of vengeance was in my heart, and my year of redemption had come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appalled, but there was no one to uphold. So my own arm brought me salvation, and my wrath upheld me. I trampled down the peoples in my anger, I made them drunk in my wrath, and I poured out their lifeblood on the earth. I will recount the steadfast love of the Lord, the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord has granted us, and the great goodness to the house of Israel that he has granted them according to his compassion, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, Surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior. In all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old, but they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he turned to be their enemy and himself fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old, of Moses and his people. Where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock? Where is he who put in the midst of them his Holy Spirit, who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters before them to make for himself an everlasting name, who led them through the depths? Like a horse in the desert, they did not stumble. Like livestock that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. So you led your people to make for yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see from your holy and beautiful habitation. Where are your zeal and your might? The stirring of your inner parts and your compassion are held back from me. For you are our father. Though Abraham does not know us and Israel does not acknowledge us, you, O Lord, are our father, our redeemer. From of old is your name. O Lord, why do you make us wander from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage, your holy people held possession for a little while. Our adversaries have trampled down your sanctuary. We have become like those over whom you have never ruled, like those who are not called by your name. Isaiah 64 Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins, we have been a long time. And shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O oh Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please, look. We are all your people. Your holy cities have become a wilderness. Zion has become a wilderness, Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and beautiful house where our fathers praised you has been burned by fire, and all our pleasant places have become ruins. Will you restrain yourself at these things, O Lord? Will you keep silent and afflict us so terribly? Isaiah. Reformation Study Bible Notes, R.C. Sproul, Isaiah 62, 64, Chapter 62, 62, 1 for Zion's sake. God acts not only for his own glory, but for the good of his people, Rom. 828, Burning Torch. 
This picture of salvation as a welcoming light is developed in 58, 8, 60, 1, 3. 62, 2 nations, kings. They witness the confirmation of the promises, 2, 2, 4, 41, 2 note, 52, 10, 60, 3, 61, 11. A new name. Like new clothes, 61, 10 note, the new name signifies a renewed relationship and enhanced privilege, VV. 4, 12, CF. 1, 26, 56, 5, 60, 14, 18, CF. General 17, 5, 15, Reverend 2, 17, 3, 12. 62, 3, crown of beauty. The Lord shares his glory with his people. See 69, 62, 4, forsaken, married. The promised renaming process is underway, redefining Jerusalem's status before God. 62, 5. So shall your God rejoice over you. The Lord does not redeem his people reluctantly and under obligation. He delights to do so because he rejoices in her Zeph. 317. 62, 6 watchmen. An image for prophets. CF. 56, 10 note. Though there they are ineffective, false prophets. They shall never be silent. Not because the danger is constant, but because they are constantly declaring the Lord's praise and interceding for the city. See 60, 62. 8 has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm. That is by himself. See 1424, 40, 10 note. 41, 10, 51, 9, 52, 10, 53, 1. Food for your enemies. The curse, Lev, 616, Dote, 833, will be replaced by blessing. 62, 9, drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Part of the annual tithe was brought to the temple in Jerusalem for a celebration, which might include alcoholic beverages, do it. 26. In the restoration, the people will celebrate in God's presence, with no fear of their enemies. 62, 10, go through, go through, build up, build up. These imperatives emphatically encourage the people to worship. Gates, these lead into the court of the sanctuary, v9. Lift up a signal. C 11, 10, 49, 22. Salvation is for the peoples as well as for Israel. 2, 11, daughter of Zion. C note on 1, 6, holy people. C 4, 3, X 19, pet, 2, 9, 10. Isaiah returns to the theme of a new name, CV 2. Redeemed. C note on 35, 9. Chapter 63. One who is this? Gabbing as the divine warrior, one whose people. This is the good news that the watchmen on the walls are to declare to their contemporaries. 10. Edom. Represents the ungodly and proud nations. As it does often in the OT 34 1 17, ESP, V5, CF, Lamb, 4 21, 22, Ezek, 35, Joel 3 19, Obad, 14 15, Mal, 1 2 5, Bosra, an important city in Edom, 30 miles 48 kilometers southeast of the Dead Sea, 63 3 alone, God has won the victory without needing or receiving help from anyone else, and therefore does not need to share his glory with anyone 59 16, Winepress, stained, an extended metaphor for the day of the Lord Lamb. 115, Joel 313, Reverend 14, 17, 20, 1915. The wine press represents the battle, and the juice pressed out represents the casualties of war. The depiction also forms part of the blessing on Judah in general 49, 11, for in Jesus Christ, God comes as a descendant of Judah to win the victory by shedding his own blood for the sake of his people. On the last day, Jesus Christ will return to win the final victory over all of his foes, Reverend 19, 13, 15. 63, 4, day of vengeance, my year of redemption. Alludes to the laws concerning slaves and property in the Jubilee year. Lev 25. This idea of redemption is developed throughout Isaiah, especially in 61, 1, 63, especially in 61, 9 and notes. The full redemption of God's people necessarily includes the judgment of his enemies, though NT reveals that there is a chronological separation between the Messiah's coming to bring salvation and his coming to bring judgment. Had come. The future is already seen through faith. 63, 7. I will recount. Isaiah will proclaim aloud, P.S. 51, 13, 15, 89, 1, 145, 7. The Lord's mighty acts of the past, described as his steadfast love, Hesed, his covenant loyalty to his people children, who will not deal falsely. What Israel was called to be, the faithful children of God. X. 14, 1. Not what they actually became, the rebellious children described in 1, 2, 4. 63, 9. Affliction. Israel's sufferings in Egypt. 2, 25. Angel of his presence. God himself was with his people in angelic form, rescuing them from the enemies in miraculous ways. In V11, God's presence in the midst of his people is by his Holy Spirit. Carried. CF. X. 19, 4. Dut. 1, 31, 32, 10, 12. Rebellion against Holy Spirit. Rebellion against God's word, brought the patience of God's spirit to an end, and the exile resulted cf. 2 chr. 6 15, 21st, ps. 6 33, act 7 51, eph. 4 30. Divine patience is long-suffering, but it will not restrain God's judgment forever. 3 11 days of old. The period of the exodus and wilderness wanderings. This period, before Israel entered the land, is intensely relevant to those who are in exile in Babylon, and thus once again outside the land. In spite of the Lord's faithfulness to them, they face the same temptations to doubt, grumble, and rebel against him. Shepherds of his flock. Moses was this shepherd. Jesus is our shepherd. Hadi 316 1320 315. Look down from heaven and see. The prophet asks the Lord to renew his presence with his people as of old, restoring them from captivity. He appeals to the Lord's compassion and mercy because the people have not merited the Lord's aid. 63 16. Our Father. God has always been the Father of his people. 64 8 x 4 22 23. Jer. They are his children by adoption. Doit. 32 
6. Rom. 8.15. They are rebellious children, and so might be disowned by earthly fathers such as Abraham or Israel Jacob, but God will still be their father, and their redeemer. Buying them back from their self-inflicted bondage because of his grace and mercy. Abraham. C51 2. 317 make us wonder. God makes those who reject him stray Rom. 1 20 25, 2 this, 2 10 12, and may confirm them in their sin. 6 10, X 4 21 PS, 95 8. Isaiah's own preaching brings blindness and deafness to those who have rebelled against God. 6 9 10. Our adversaries, the Babylonians. PS, 74 4 8. 63, 19, like those over whom you have never ruled, the Lord's reign over his people was manifest in his gift of the promised land. When they went into exile, But, if ever, the reason that the apostles on a human choice, not upon a divine. Many in view that the, as an object of divine mercy, is something that God does voluntarily. He's not bound to do it. He doesn't have to do it. He's not required to do it. He does it out of the sheer goodness of his heart. And we can never say to a merciful God, and this is the thing that scares me, I hope you will never say to a merciful God, God, you are not merciful enough. That is blasphemous, to charge God with not being merciful enough, because that charge of God, and this is, he does, mercy, what does that mean? If he, if he grants mercy on whom he will. To grant his mercy right. God reminds us, which he has any right, and receives grace and equal. Not to the rest. God chooses the process of election is with a view to a fallen, lost human race. And God considers the whole world. He knows that the whole world has fallen. And he knows that if he just gave justice, what would happen? If God only exercised justice to a fallen race, everyone would perish. But God chooses to grant mercy to some. Jacob receives mercy. Esau receives justice. Now, is there anything wrong with that? Well, we say it's not fair. What we mean by that is it's not equal. And what lurks in our minds is this problem. Well, if if God is going to be gracious, if we have two men who are judged guilty and they're under the sentence of death, and God is gracious to this one, shouldn't he also be gracious to the other one? I mean, is it fair for the governor to grant executive clemency to one prisoner and not to the rest? Well, it certainly isn't equal. But again, this person receives grace, this person receives justice. He has nothing of which he has any right to complain. There's nothing unjust about it. And God reminds us again and again that it is his right to grant his mercy upon whom he will grant his mercy. And he, if he get, grants mercy to one, he is not obligated to give it to the other. Again, if, he's, if we think that God is ever obligated to be merciful, what does that mean? We're not thinking about mercy anymore. Because mercy, by definition, is not obligated. Mercy is something that God does voluntarily. 
He's not bound to do it. He doesn't have to do it. He's not required to do it. He does it out of the sheer goodness of his heart. And we can never say to a merciful God, and this is the thing that scares me, I hope you will never say to a merciful God, God, you are not merciful enough. That is blasphemous, to charge God with not being merciful enough because that charge implies that there is sin in God, that God has not done what he should have done. He should have been more merciful. And who are you to say to your Creator, by whose mercy you draw every breath that you breathe, that he has been lacking in mercy? Or he says the most, but upon God who that uh, the absence see that's of predestined that God so predestines an unbelief in the heart and Hema looks like this Augustinians and Calvinists that is not the Augustinian view some people call it hyper Calvinism I think that is a serious insult to John Calvin to call it hyper-Calvinism, because it's not hyper-Calvinism, it's sub-Calvinism, or worse, anti-Calvinism. Hyper-Calvinism would mean super-Calvinism. Calvin would not appreciate that particular uh, nomenclature. Rather, the Augustinian view is that, that the re that predestination is certainly double because not everybody is saved, that there are two sides to it. Some people are elect and some are not. So we have two sides of the coin and we have to deal with both sides of the problem. However, the schema is positive negative. Now, what that means is that in the case of the elect, God does, in fact, intrude into their lives and sovereignly creates faith in their hearts. But in the case of the rest of mankind, he lets them to themselves. He does not come in and create evil in their hearts or create unbelief in their hearts. He passes over them, letting them to themselves so that God, God's activity here is negative or passive rather than active. You see the difference? In this one, in the case of the reprobate, the reprobate they do what they want to do on their own steam. God is not creating fresh evil in their hearts or anything like that. God is not coercing them to damnation. He is simply passing them over, leaving them to their own devices. But the immediate question that comes up is, well, then why does Paul say here in Romans 9 that God gives mercy to some and to others he hardens? And the classical example of God hardening is the hardening of Pharaoh's heart in the Old Testament. That's a difficult one, and I only have about a minute and a half to answer it, so I'll try to do it quickly. But even when we speak of hardening, we have to distinguish between active hardening and passive hardening or what we would call direct hardening or indirect hardening. There are two ways that God can harden the, the heart of Pharaoh. One is that he could come down, intrude into Pharaoh's life, and create evil in the heart of Pharaoh in order for God to accomplish his purposes. He could make Pharaoh sin. But if he does that, then what? How could God, if he's just and righteous, force Pharaoh to sin and then punish him for that sin? That would make God the author of sin, which is an absolute no-no, biblically. But there's another way Pharaoh can have his heart hardened. Remember that Pharaoh is a sinner. And all of us are sinners. But all of us have our sin to some degree checked and restrained by certain opposition around us that keeps us from being utterly depraved. When men achieve levels of power where they become outside the bounds of normal restraints, their ability to sin freely increases. I mean, the only thing that's keeping Pharaoh from being utterly wicked is the restraining power of God. It certainly wasn't the government of Egypt that was keeping him in check. Only God's restraints we're keeping Pharaoh from being more wicked than he actually was. If God wants to harden Pharaoh's heart, does God have to create fresh evil there? All he has to do is remove his hands. 
and give Pharaoh all the space he needs. And that's how Pharaoh's heart is hardened, which is itself an act of divine judgment, a just act of divine judgment upon him. And the gospel does the same thing in the lives of the reprobate. The more people hear the gospel and freely reject it, the more their hearts become hardened. And so that you see that in this drama, Pharaoh hardens his own heart. All God does is remove the restraints. And so Pharaoh is responsible for the hardening of his heart. And so again, we see that in this scheme, in the concept of election, all men are fallen, all men are wicked. God gives mercy to some, as in the case of Jacob. And the others, he leaves to themselves. They receive justice. This group receives mercy that God might be honored and that God's purposes might stand. The testimony to the relationship between the Lord and his people was erased. Called by your name, to signify ownership. Dote. 8.10. Jer. 49. Chapter 64. With eloquence Isaiah pleads with God not just to look down from heaven 63.15, but to come down, making his presence unmistakably clear, especially in the fires of judgment on his enemies. 4.45 and notes X 19.18 he be at 12.18. 64. Three awesome things. An allusion to God's appearance on Mount Sinai, after the Exodus. 19.16.18. Dote. 10.21. PSS. 66, 36, 106, 22, see Ezek, 32, 68, note. Such appearances often involve shaking the heavens and the earth, especially the mountains, which represent unshakable strength. Ps. 46, 2, 64, 5 Him who joyfully works righteousness. Those who sincerely seek to serve the Lord, unlike the insincere followers in ch 58, 64, 6, unclean, unfit to be in God's presence. Lev, 13, 45, 46, Hag, 2, 13, 14, polluted garment. Under the Old Covenant, garments stained by menstruation are defiled, as is anything else that comes into contact with a flow of life fluids from the body, 022 note Lev. Ezek. 617, CF. Phil. 478. Since God is the Lord of life, nothing associated with the diminishment of life can enter his presence. Our problem is not merely our sinful acts, but the fact that even our very best works are defiled before him. We all fade like a leaf, we are transitory mortals while the Lord endures forever, 47 8, like the wicked in PS. 1. We are easily blown away, in the wind. Our Father, see note on, clay. Work of your hand, see notes on, cf, jer, 18 1, 11, rom, 9 20, 21. God is sovereign over the fate of all people, we exist to be shaped by him. cf, the promises of, holy cities. The cities of Judah, holy and beautiful house. The object of Isaiah's prayer in 63 15, our fathers. The speakers are at least a generation removed from the fall of the temple, in 586 BC, 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 5 5 1 11. The Thessalonians are told, First Thessalonians 5 Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them. As 20, 180. That's how many clients... I'm 1 Thessalonians 5 Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with Him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. 
See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I put you under oath before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. B.C. 1 Thessalonians 5, Chapter 5, 5. B.C. 1 Thessalonians 5, Chapter 5, 5, 1 11. The Thessalonians are told to prepare for the same thing that will come unexpectedly upon the ungodly, the day of the Lord. V.V. 2, 4. Paul assumes that Christians and non-Christians alike will be alive and present when that day arrives. In other words, the rapture of Christians spoken of in 4.17 see note at 4.17, will not occur before the arrival of the day of the Lord, that will also bring sudden and inescapable destruction to the wicked 2 Thess. 2, 1, 2 notes. 5, 2 day of the Lord, a prominent designation of the day on which Christ returns, it is well known from the OTEG, Joel 2 1, 31, Amos 5 18 Zeph, 1 7 14 Mal. 4 5, where it is used of God's drawing near in judgment. The NT can also speak of the day of the Lord as having begun in the pouring out of saving blessings through the risen Christ, cf. Acts 2 14 36. The prominent OT association of the day of the Lord with judgment is continued in the NT, where the last judgment and final rewards and punishments are in view, Acts 17 31, Rom, 2 5 16, 2 Cor, 1 14, 2 Pet, 3 10, 13. Christ has already passed through the judgment of the day of the Lord for believers, so they need not fear his return Heb, 9 27 28. Unbelievers however, will feel the wrath of God when the day of the Lord is consummated at the second coming of Christ. Like a thief in the night, see Matt, 2, 44, Pet, 3 10, Reverend 3 3 16 15. Paul seems to be familiar with at least some of Jesus' Olivet Discourse Matt, 24, 3, 25, 46, Mark 13, 3, 37, Luke 21, 5, 36, 5, 8, we belong to the day, sober alertness befits soldiers who belong to the day e thief, 5, 11, 17, breastplate of faith, helmet the hope of salvation, as in other texts concerning spiritual warfare, Rom, 15, 12, 14, e thief, 6, 10, 17, Paul echoes an OT passage that describes armor that God himself wears in waging war against his people's enemies is, 59, 17. God has not destined us for wrath. The wrath in this context is evidently the condemnation and punishment that the impenitent will receive on the day of wrath. Rom. 5. Ephech. 6. Colonel 3. 6. Reverend 6. 16. 17. 11. 18. God has appointed his people to obtain salvation and glory in Jesus Christ, not wrath. 1. 10. 2. Thes. 2. 14. Yet the Thessalonians and many other Christians have been appointed by God also to undergo and withstand tribulation of every kind. 3. 2. 4. 2. Thes. 1. 4. James 1. 2. 4. 1. Pet. 4 12 14, Reverend 1 9. Christians should not interpret their own suffering as God's wrath against their sins, for believers are not destined for wrath. Instead, they should view suffering as part of God's plan to lovingly discipline them and to conform them to the image of His Son. Five twelve. Even at this early stage in the life of the congregation, there were leaders who had spiritual care and oversight. Paul endorses a proper esteem for church workers and leaders, exhorting believers to love and respect them. Some Thessalonians named elsewhere, who may have been in Paul's mind, here are Jason, Acts 17 6, 9, Aristarchus, Acts 24 27 2, Colonel 4 10, Philem, 24, Secundus, Acts 24, and possibly Gaius, Acts 19 29. 5 14 Brothers, this address, also v 12, indicates that the exhortations that follow assign the responsibility for ministry to the entire congregation, not just to its acknowledged leaders. The idol, the context here and in 2 Thess, 3 6 7 11, show that the form of idleness in view is an irresponsible refusal to work for a living text note. See also 4 11, 12. 515. A Christian must treat others justly and work for their genuine good, is, 1, 50. It is a remarkable part of Christian morality that the Christian, following the example of Christ, 1 pet, 2 21, 23, should refuse to seek personal retaliation, Matt, 2 20 day 21, 1 core, 6 7 1 pet, 3, 9. I've 19 21, Paul admonishes the Thessalonians not to despise legitimate prophecy, which at the time Paul was writing, remained an ongoing gift of the Spirit. Both Silas and Paul were prophets, Acts 13 1 15 32, Nevertheless, claims to divine prophecy must be tested and not accepted uncritically. 2 Thess. 2, 2, cf. 1 Cor. 14 29. Since prophets were appointed to lay the foundation of the church, the gift of prophecy has since passed away. Cf. 
EPH, 2 19 21, 5 23, Sanctify. The complete mending of all human imperfection is not only possible, it is certain. God is faithful and will accomplish it, v 24. This confident hope sustains believers' present pursuit of holiness, despite ongoing struggles with temptation, 4 3 7, see for John 3 1 3. The time element must be remembered. Ultimate perfection, to include a glorified physical body as well, will be accomplished at the second coming of Jesus Christ, 3 13 Phil. 1, 6, 3 20, 21. See theological note, the Holy Spirit as sanctifier, on p 2023. Your whole spirit and soul and body. Three words are used to emphasize the wholeness of the perfection. Spirit and soul are used as virtual synonyms in the Bible for the spiritual component of a person. When the terms occur together, as here and in HEB 412, it is difficult to find any significant difference in meaning. Compare the fourfold representation of heart, soul, mind and strength in Mark 1230, put you under oath. The GK verb is unusually strong. Paul is laying a solemn weight upon the whole congregation to learn the contents of this epistle. So important did he consider his apostolic teaching for their spiritual good. 2.13.4 Two notes. R.C. Sproul, ed. The Reformation Study Bible, English Standard Version, 2015 edition. Orlando, a Florida Reformation Trust, 2015, 2130, 8, 2139. Okay, my headphones died, so sorry for the bad quality of my voice, uh, but uh, yeah, this chapter is just loaded with amazing content, um, amazing words from our from God through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit coming through Paul, um, and or like. Yeah, the Holy Spirit using Paul to, you know, write this. I just, uh, yeah, I just encourage you, please continue to meditate on everything that we read. Please highlight, please think through, please pray through. And we have another one of those, this is the will of God uh, verses here. And um, that's crucial. If you want to know what the will of God is, well, First Thessalonians has a lot, or has at least two verses that are very direct about this is God's will for you. Right here it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Also, all these commands, these are all God's will for us. We know, the way we know God's will is by reading God's word. Um. So, yeah, this is... This is so good and this is so important i feel like we we overlook stuff like this at times but like this is like a command and also like this is like a beautiful thing about the structure of god's church we should we should do this you should respect and uh those those who are laboring among uh among you in the church and uh are over you in the lord and admonish you to esteem them very highly in love because of their work your elders the of your church you, you know your pastor and the other teaching elders um or your pastors you know they you should respect them because they are laboring among you and are over you in the lord and they admonish you and they you should esteem them very highly in love because of their work and we in the church we we must be at peace among ourselves and we, sh we must admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. We must see to it that no one repays evil for evil, but, but all, rather that we would always seek to do good to one another and to everyone as well, to love one another and then to go and share the gospel with those uh, wherever uh, the lost people, wherever they are, and to treat them with respect and gentleness and kindness to seek to do good to them um, because it, Jesus commands us to and also it's a good witness to the, the kindness of God um, and we are to rejoice always pray without ceasing give thanks in all circumstances for this will of God and Christ Jesus for you and um, yeah when we are thinking about all that the Lord has done for us and we're rejoicing and rejoicing in him we're praying without ceasing to him and we're giving thanks to him um in all circumstances like that's like when we're actually happy too because we're focusing on the right thing um yeah and just so many more good things and then we know god is the one that is able to help us and to do all this and in us and 
um, he he who calls us is faithful. He will surely do it. So these we're given these commands, and we're also um, encouraged that God is going to help us. And uh, just love the request for prayer for Paul. He's praying, brothers, pray for us. Um, he's dependent on God, not on himself. So he asked for the, them to pray to the Lord for him. Um, yeah, and just what a beautiful ending greeting. And you can see how he loves his, the people. And uh, yeah, who are we now? We're, if we're in Christ, we're children of the light. And so we are to walk as children of the light, not children of the darkness. We are not to sleep at others do, as others do, but we're to keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are who are who get drunk, get drunk at night. That's not supposed to be us. We're supposed to be filled with the Spirit, and be, we belong to the day. So let us be sober-minded, sober, literally sober, and sober-minded, in general, like uh, ready to fight for God with God, um, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and a helmet of the hope of salvation. Amen. Um, which is huge connection with the Ephesians 6 passage about the armor of God. Um, yeah, and just, just the beauty of the fact that, like, God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through Jesus, uh, who died for us. And so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Praise God. Ah, oh, I love, love him so much. I'm looking forward to being with him so much forever. Um, and he saved us and, and for himself, by himself, to himself. Um, and so, yeah, daily we are to encourage one another and build one another up just as, in fact, we are doing. So with that being said, praise God for his beautiful word. And let's close our time in prayer. Um... Oh, before we do that, we just finished First Thessalonians. We get to start Second Thessalonians tomorrow. So, congratulations! 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 Okay, let's close in prayer. Again, sorry for the bad audio quality. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to read your word, O oh God, and just for blessing us um, with more of you, more knowledge of you, more, more word stored up in our hearts. Lord, we pray that we would just be meditating on what we've read and, and be intentionally storing it up in our hearts and minds, Lord. And Lord, would you help us to be obedient to the text? Lord, would you help us to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing? Um, would you help us to uh, not sleep as others do, but to please help us to keep awake and be sober, oh God. Be sober-minded and alert. Help us, God. And um, because of your grace that, be, that we belong to the day, we thank you for that. And we pray that you would help us to um, be sober, as we just said, and to ha put on the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet of, the helmet of uh, hope. Of salvation and because you have not destined us for wrath but um, to those that you have and will save Lord you destined them to obtain salvation through the Lord Jesus who died for us so that whether we lit whether we are awake or asleep we might live with you and we look forward so much to to that day that um, when we will be with you face to face and we thank you that we can also be with you now in a different way a little bit of a different way and you, you've given us your spirit and you said it is good that the helper may come and it's yeah so we thank you lord we just pray that you would help us to encourage one another and build one another up in the church and to respect those who labor among us and are over us in the lord and admonish us to esteem them very highly in love because of their work um, and that uh, we would be, be at peace among ourselves and that we would admonish the idol that we would encourage the faint-hearted that we would help the weak, that we would be patient with them all, and that we would see that no one repays evil for evil, but to always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Father, help us. Help us to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, to give thanks in all circumstances, and to not help us to not quench the Spirit, help us to not despise prophecies, but to test everything and to hold fast what is good. 
Help us, please, Lord, to abstain from every form of evil. And God, we thank you so much that you are the God of peace and that you yourself will sanctify us completely, um, us who are in Christ completely, and may, and that, Lord, that you will help our whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the day of the coming of you, um, and that you who call us is faithful and you will do it, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, pray that your grace would, would be with us and, and, uh, yeah, just, um, help us to just acknowledge you, God, and, and, uh, we need you, Lord, and, uh, yeah, you're our only hope, and, um, just thank you for your redemption, for your, that you are our Savior and our Lord, and, yeah, we just pray that we keep thinking and praying through these things, Lord, um, yeah, in Jesus' name, please help us, oh God, amen. Okay, well, that's all the text for today, so grace and peace. This is the word of the Lord, the word of the living God, scripture, um, is the word of the living God. So thanks be to God. Grace and peace.